Oh, Logitech, Logitech, Logitech. Great, great products, but terrible, terrible software. So anyway, we're going to be going through, today we are going to be looking at uh, how to actually permanently get rid of the garish flashing lights on your gaming mouse. Uh, if you have to happen to have a, um, a flashing light gaming mouse like I have. So I've got a G502. It's a fairly old mouse at this stage, but it's uh, I've only just installed it. And it's got this, uh, this light that just keeps on. It's in, in my peripheral vision all the time. I find it super, super annoying, so I just want to turn it off. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go to the, basically just Google Logitech G Hub. And so you can then go and, and download that, which will then, it's sort of, it's like software that manages or sp supposed to manage all of your, Logitech uh, equipment. It's um, I find it clunky and annoying, so I try to avoid it if I can. But to override what your mouse is doing, you will need to actually download this. It's the only way to actually then override the um, the settings on your mouse. So we, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open it up. Now I think that by default, I think I've got it back to where the defaults were, and you can see this. This is what I mean by this really garish looking uh, flashing light, which is just terrible. <laughs> So there's a few things you can do if you are running the software. Uh, let's just go through the actual user interface because there's a lot of um, a lot of videos and a lot of content out there that says all you need to do is click on this and then just go and change the settings. It doesn't work. That's not the way it does work. It does work if you change certain settings and we will have to get there. But let's just start back at the start and work our way through. So the first thing is you actually have a whole lot of different profiles in through here as well. These are all the different um, profiles. Uh, sort of as, as like within the actual system itself, within the actual mouse, and I'm just using a, a, just an old G502 here, but there are, all the modern ones have the same sort of setup. When you do come in, if this has been selected, onboard memory mode is on, and that's what I do want to ultimately have. I want it to be controlled by the onboard memory. I don't want it controlled through this piece of software. So when I go and click on this one, it doesn't come up with the actual settings. What it does come up with though is three different profiles. Now the profiles, again, can be adapted from the profiles that you then actually have. If I go and click on these, I can go to the details in through here and look at the details of the actual mouse and the settings for this one, where it's it, the logo is set to cycle. Uh, the rate is uh, basically eight seconds. Every eight, eight seconds, it will then do another cycle. The brightness is 100%, but you can't change anything from in here. And so you, again, you sort of feel like this actually you know, this should be where you should be able to change things. So the profiles don't really help you. You can change the profile. So you can replace it with another profile. Now we'll come back to this one here because you've got, you've got your inbuilt three profiles and you ultimately will be wanting to change it here to probably your desktop profile, which is um, what will probably then go, go and adapt in this particular tutorial. So uh, we, this, is not, this does not help us. We can actually, if we go to the devices in onboard mode, enable surf, software control to configure it and access all the features. If we do that one, it's onboard mode means it's controlled from the mouse. If we enable this, what it does do, or disable, I think it should be the actual word. Again, great uh, user experience slash user interface from Logitech. Uh, so the onboard memory mode then gets turned off. And at this point, we can then start to make changes, but it is controlled through this particular piece of software. So if we go back out again, in fact, if I just go and if I go back in and turn it back on again, just going to go, got it. So again, I can, if I go to device settings, it's the same deal in through here where, to where these profiles are, are what's being used. So if I go back into here, this is probably the easiest way to do it. Just turn it off at this point in through this other side. Just go, got it. That will then make it so that when you do click on the mouse, it will then go to this actual settings based on whatever your actual current profile is. Now, remember, when we go back into here and turn this one back on and then have a look inside it, the profile that's being used is one called Profile 1 from the onboard memory. We do want to change this one across. So just, just go back and enable it again and just go back out again. So that's now been turned off because we turned it off on the previous setting. We can then go back into, now I would suggest the, the default desktop is probably a good one to use. So you may want to change things, for example, like your sensitivity. By the way, if you want it to be across all of your profiles, like if you've got a heap of profiles and you really just want to have, have it all sort of set so that it just goes across the whole lot, just make this little lock go down and then change whatever you want to do. The lock is not a lock to lock in the settings here. It's a lock that makes it 
consistent across all the other profiles. So I definitely want that to be the case with sensitivity. And also, in, like you've also got the, in the, the uh, key, key assignments in through here as well. I'm not going to worry about those. They could be useful across different, uh, different programs. Uh, so you can set them up uh, for the programs. But then the lighting, I definitely don't want these things, you know, the, the primary and then the logo itself. These I don't want to have happen at all pretty much. Or if they do, just keep it down around, say, 10%, just so it's very, very light. So it's, so it's not noticeable, but still actually there. Might as well use it. So let's just go with that one. You've got, you have other settings in through here as well, but I'll just go with... Uh, I'll keep the cycle going, but... I, I, at a very, very um, uh, dull down version. I'll just go back to the primary as well, which is this little side panel. And so this is off by default, by the way, but I'm, still, I'm going to make this one 10% as well. So I'll just make that one go to 10%. There we are. So we've actually now changed this one. And I want this across. I don't want any of the settings to have you know, to have this any, anything different. So we're making this change in desktop default. So that's the actual default settings for the actual mouse itself. But... This is only going to work while this software is, is operational. As soon as the off software stops working, it will then switch back to the good old onboard settings. And so we need to override the onboard settings. If we just go back out into here again, we can now see this is much, much duller than what was there before, which is ideal. So if we now flick back to the onboard memory mode, the problem we have here, if we just go to got it, it's gone back to this again, because this is not over, even though we've told it to override the other settings, it's only the other profiles of the, what we've got set up in the software, not the profiles of the actual mouse itself. Click on this one again, we go back into here, we can't do the, any editing. And so we just actually then have our onboard memory mode is on, and the profile that we have selected is profile one. What you need to do through here is to go back to profile one and then go down to replace with, now that we've done the changes, desktop default. Click on that one through there. It then changes to this one and look at the, the actual overall uh, effect is exactly what we want. So we've overridden the, the actual me the onboard memory mode with the default settings that we had just set up. And so that's all we need to do at this point. Now the default for the mouse is to have the onboard memory and to actually have the default settings that we had set up. It's so convoluted. It's really unintuitive. So the first thing, again, just to really quickly summarize, um, just make sure that you're in a, a basic, some sort of basic settings. You have to turn off the onboard memory mode. You have to then click on the mouse. You have to then go through, set up what you want for the settings that you've got through here. You can create a different one if, you, if you're wanting to. Lock it in if you want this to go across all of your other settings. Uh, then go back out again once you've actually done all that. Go back in and turn on the onboard memory. Just click on OK, got it. Go back to device settings or click on the actual thing again. And then go and change the slot back to the actual default that you had just changed. That then makes it so that the onboard is now working in accordance with the settings that you have made. It's the only way you can do it that I've found anyway. I don't think there's any other way to do it. So I hope that it's been helpful. It's uh, such a clunky way to do it. Anyway, that's what it is. I hope that's been helpful. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.